This is Martin Lappin with Alternative Heating Solutions. In this part of the video, we're going to reassemble it. And here is what I would say are the two most important parts. This is the piece that goes to the front of the stove by the air box. Put the high temp silicone around that. Make sure all the air goes where it's supposed to. That's what feeds your secondary air to the nozzle. And just any old uh, high temperature silicone will work. That's up to 600 degrees. And here, if you do any mechanicing at all, you know what freeze plugs are. It's what blocks the casting holes in the block. Well, when they make these nozzles, these holes go clear through to the actual nozzle part. So here what you do is you take a little wad of ceramic blanket and plug the holes that go to the outside. Basically, you're plugging the holes on the tapered part. If you want, after you do it, you can shine a flashlight down through here and make sure you didn't stuff too much in, but I can't see that being an issue. It just takes a little plug. And if your dealer don't have this stuff, you can get it on Amazon. Actually, you can get it smaller. You can get a one foot by one foot square of it. And all I used was what I tore off the corner. It doesn't take much. And when you're handling these things, like I said, they use stainless steel, what they call needles for reinforcement in it. Wear a pair of gloves. A pair of welding gloves or heavy chore gloves should be good enough. You can see I got the back one in place and have the, and the light ain't coming on. And the front one's in place. Now maybe we can see the front one. Yep. You see a little bit of silicone squished out. That's fine. Ain't gonna hurt anything. Once your front and back piece are in place, I take these and I set them over here on each side. Then slide them in. They are heavy, so you gotta be careful not to drop them or pinch yourself in the process. But it's not horrible to do. I'd say if you allow yourself a good hour to get the old ones out and clean everything, it only takes about 15 minutes tops to drop the new ones in place. I'm gonna go ahead and clean this out before I restarted it. But this has been running since the middle of October. And here it is almost the new year. And it's not worth getting the shop back dirty. What I think helps a bunch is if you uh, don't rack the cleaning handle when the fan's running. Wait till it's off. That way all your dust settles to the bottom of the tubes instead of getting try to draw it out through the fan. Mmm, virgin nozzle. If you want. You go ahead and start it up like normal, and once the damper is fully open, you should be able to feel the air coming out of the cross holes in the nozzle. And you know you got it in right, and you're not going to have any issues. I went ahead and portioned, reinstalled the lower refractories, and I put a new chalk bar in, which that's what they call that piece that goes across the front of the refractory, the lower refractory. Actually, it's a chalk bar. I think they last a little longer if you install them so you're looking at the welds. The other thing that helps as far as nozzle life and life of the lower refractory, and yes, I know it's not always possible. You gotta leave for work, you gotta leave for work. But I try to only load it or clean them right before they start a new cycle. That way everything's had a chance to cool off. You're not hitting that nice hot refractory with a metal tool, which can cause chips. And I would say, like all right, about an hour to get the old stuff out. 
everything cleaned up, 10, 15 minutes to install the new stuff. It's not a big deal. This has been Martin Lappin with Alternative Heating Solutions. If women don't find you handsome, at least they can find you handy.